Welcome back. So that was my new friend, Nate. We're on a call right now to talk about the gear that he actually wore when I was on my trip to Nashville. I took some of my collection with me that I knew I wanted to like show off to a few people and Nate was one of them. So first off, welcome. Thanks for joining me, Nate. Thank you for having me. Why don't you tell us just a little bit about yourself, you know, like what level of hockey, where do you play and that kind of stuff? I play for the Junior Preds and Nashville 08 team. I play AAA. I've been playing for about five years now. That's pretty much it. Yeah, and I've seen your highlights. Your dad posts highlights on Instagram. And, you know, honestly, that's where I first learned of you is that we have that mutual connection through Bones. And you stepped out on the ice with some vintage Cooper gear and you uh, made a fan out of me immediately with that. I'm just curious, why is a kid your age, you're 12, right? Yes, sir. Why was a kid your age wearing vintage Cooper gear on the ice like that? I just like the style of the 60s and the 50s, the stand up and the kicksies and the pad stacks. It's always fascinated me because I I'm a big Johnny Bauer fan. That's why when, when I was little, that all I did was poach uh, the kids in house league. It's the only move I used. Yeah, and and you currently still use the poke check. I've seen your videos, and uh, that's cool that you know it's a valuable tool. I, I think I've heard a lot of you know NHL goalie analysts and stuff talk about it that it's still out there, and we've seen all the highlights with like. Uh, Mark Andre Fleury too, still still using it. It's a great move, man. If you can just get the guys uh, the puck away from him and his feet out from under him, it's a good save. If the puck doesn't go in the net, you're golden. That's awesome. Yeah, definitely. It was seeing you wearing the the old Cooper kit that you know drew my attention to you. And so when I was making my plans to come down and see Bones, I knew right away that, that I wanted that opportunity to meet with you and have a talk some of the stuff we already talked about i wanted to show you some of the special gear that i have in my collection as well so i brought you down some 1950s kineski custom k444 pads that are the style like johnny bauer and gump worsley wore 1960s cooper weeks branded gloves and then a couple of fiber sport masks from the 70s when we were in the parking lot and i opened up that little tiny bag it all fit into What were your first thoughts when I pulled like those pads out and handed them to you? I was amazed. Like, um, it's just crazy to think that somebody wore those like 60 years ago and played the the game with them on. And now you're holding them in your hands. For myself as fan of the gear and a fan of the old school goalies, seeing a 12 year old kid holding them, you know, and being amazed and appreciating them was really awesome. It meant a lot to me to have that interaction with you. The one thing I've never done with those pads is allow anybody else to wear that gear at all. You're the the first person I ever made that offer to. And you just looked up at me, looked at your dad, looked back at me and said, yes, you'll wear it. And I can't explain to you how happy that made me when you said yes. From your viewpoint, getting it on and getting out on the ice, what were your impressions of the gear, not just in a parking lot holding it, but wearing it and out there playing in it. Yeah, it, may, it, it makes you feel like it's weird because someone wore those and were on the ice and played with them. It's crazy. Generations down the line. It's crazy that moms let their kids do it. <laughs> That's true. They also let them play without masks. Yeah. It was a brutal just a shot right to the head. Yep. If you could choose one piece that you would say was your favorite thing that you wore that day, what what would you say and why would you choose that? It has to be between the glove and the mask. Well, the mask was all like, it's crazy that people wore that back then and weren't scared of getting in the way of shots. The glove, it reminds me of a first baseman's mitt almost. Well, I play baseball and like, it, it, you have to do the same thing of catching a baseball with that glove. 
and just letting it into their pocket instead of trying to stay stiff. Right. It's work. a whole different it's a whole different style of playing, isn't it, compared to the, the gear you wear. That the, the nowadays you just have to get your hand out and firm and just catch it, let in your pocket, close your glove. And back then it was to keep it in your glove, you had to do a windmill. I saw you in the video realizing that after that first shot. I saw you practicing your motion with your arm. Yeah, it only took you like two pucks, maybe three pucks to get the feel for it. And then, yeah, you were catching them all. Yeah, I, between those two, I would have to probably the glove. I, that piece of history, I was signed by them and stuff. Yeah, and I had forgot to even tell you that stuff in the dressing room. And I just, I, at the end, when we were done taking pictures is when I remembered, hey, I should probably tell them, you know. John Cooper's signature is on that. I got to meet him a couple years ago. And, um, it's awesome. Okay, so I got to interrupt this video for just a quick minute. I want to point out these two guys. Dave Hangley. American Day. Yes, I am. American Day. Oh, yes, we care. It's what we do. And Jake Arch. We can kill the lights with the candlelit romance. Lay down in the back of the truck. Mix it up. We'll take a chance. I got to see you, girl. They were both getting on the ice for the next session and were kind enough to take some shots on us and hang out and talk about the gear and even go so far as to take a bunch of photos for us. It was really nice having that interaction with total strangers that enjoyed seeing what we were doing out there on the ice in this old gear. And anyway, I just want to let you know, I put their info down in the description. Go check them out. So how did that all that gear compare to, remember that stuff was from the 50s and 60s and you have a cooper kit of your own that's from the 1970s like did you notice a difference there's 10 20 years difference between that stuff and what you've already used for vintage gear so how did that compare they were a lot heavier and it didn't hurt as bad when you got hit by them because of the horse hair in them but not that big of a difference to be honest from that yeah. like nowadays it from 2010 pads were like four pounds and now they're like two and a half yeah. the, the technology nowadays from back then is crazy yeah that is that is a big difference and i imagine it's a real big difference for you because you're still wearing smaller pads so yours are considerably lighter than a senior pad in the same style and then you're going to like those were senior pads that you were wearing from the 50s they weren't they weren't youth pads that's what an adult would have worn they were just shorter because of the style of play was different. That's a like, that just called, it's like a shin pad for a <laughs> grown man. Oh, yeah. wow. And then for, for safety's sake, you wore your SK 600 HM 30 combo while we were out there. And then we did photos and you got to wear those masks and you already kind of touched base on it a little bit, but those masks were from the early seventies. It was a uh, fiber sport F 301 future Ramic and an F202 uh, full face mask. So like, what were your first impressions? You put on the uh, 301 first. What were your first impressions when you slid that on? They're a lot more comfortable than the mask today, but I don't think it would be that comfortable if you got him the face. <laughs> <laughs> yes, good point. Um, of the two, which one did you like the best? Uh, I like the one that like, wrapped around your face the most. Yeah, so the 202. Yeah, that's the like yeah. typical, uh, you know, style that everybody associates with the fiber sport masks. And yeah, I, I personally think that's a favorite of mine as well. You you feel like you have just a tiny bit more protection going on. So for sure. So I just wanted to you know get you on this call and we talk about the gear a little bit and tell you how much I appreciated meeting with you and and um, having conversation with you and your dad and. And then just, you know, that day being out on the ice, I was really more um, just a fan watching you practice some pad stacks in, you know, 1950s Kineski pads that were handmade by Pops Kineski, the great grandfather of all goalie gear. That, that to me was just like one of those life events that meant a lot. I'll never forget it. Hopefully, again, we can get on the ice someday. I know you do a lot of clinics and stuff and tournaments and Maybe you'll be up in my neck of the woods and we can go out on some of my ice. Sure. I get, I get you to come sub for me in my old timer league. 
<laughs> well, I appreciate it, Nate. I'm going to cut this right into some of the higher quality video that we had from the ice that day. And hopefully everybody watching this will uh, get a kick out of seeing it. You more so than me, because I was still so tired from the day before with bones, but just having so much fun and adrenaline was kicking in just because of that. Like I said, I look forward to doing this again someday and still seeing you wearing that Cooper gear. Yeah, for sure. All right. Well, thanks, thanks so much. Me. You're welcome, Nate. Thank you. So hopefully you enjoyed that conversation I had with Nate to talk about our time together wearing vintage gear and to talk about the gear in general. You can also go follow Nate on Instagram and I'll put his account up here and in the description of this video down below. Don't forget coming up next, there's some high quality video from on the ice. If you like this video, please hit the thumbs up button. Feel free to leave comments, talk about the gear or anything else. Share with anybody you might think would enjoy this video. And as always, if you haven't done it yet, please hit that subscribe button and the bell notification icon so you get alerts when I post new videos. Thanks. I'm still tired from yesterday.
I am so exhausted.